life. I will say this about investing. Everything you do learn is cumulative. What I learned at 20 is useful. Welcome to the Equity Mates Summer Series, proudly brought to you by Sharesies. Over 12 episodes, we're deep diving into some of the most exciting, interesting, and well known companies from Australia and the US. Each episode, we're also joined by an expert to help us unpack the key metrics, the bull case, and the bear case for each company. My name is Bryce, and as always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren. How are you going? I'm very good, Bryce. It wouldn't be an Australian investing podcast series on individual companies without a lithium stock yes we actually yeah, at first cut we actually had multiple lithium stocks yes so we figured that one was enough one was enough uh but you're right we are digging into core lithium today a company that has been uh well spoken about this year in the equity mates community and the broader investing community here in australia it's been pretty well covered as well and our expert joining us in the second half of this interview is none other than henry jennings from marcus today who actually had core lithium as his high conviction stock at finfest in october 2022 so can't wait to hear his thoughts uh on on core lithium we could just not do the recording with him and just play that FinFest recording. Yes. I think subsequently he has told people to sell because it ran so hot. So interested interested to get his thoughts on where it's at now. If people do want to see that, uh, YouTube. Yes. uh, YouTube.com slash EquityMates. All of our FinFest stuff is there. That's right. Now, the EquityMates Summer Series is proudly supported by Sharesies. And we love Sharesies for two reasons. The first is that there is no minimum to start investing. It's incredibly accessible. You can get started with a matter of cents. You can buy shares or portions of shares on the Sharesies platform for just one cent. You can get into Berkshire Hathaway that I think is trading at a 400,000 odd dollars or thereabouts. You can get in on that for only a matter of cents. And the second reason is as we've spoken a lot about on this show before, that is dollar cost averaging. Sharesies allow you to auto invest, which means you can truly execute dollar cost averaging in Australian, in US and New Zealand markets. All those markets are available. Download the Sharesies app or visit www.sharesies.com.au to learn more. And if you'd like $10 into your account to get started, there is a promo code that is available to everyone. It's not equity mate specific and we don't earn anything ourselves from it. It is grow. Use that for $10. Promotion T's and C's apply. Let's do it, Ray. Deep breath. Well, you've forgotten <laughs> the last part of the intro. Oh, yes. Arguably the most important part. A reminder that while we are licensed, we are not aware of your personal financial circumstances. This is not a buy, hold, or sell recommendation. Any advice in the show is general only. We're here to educate and to entertain. Seek professional advice. <laughs> entertain and educate. <laughs> Depending which way you look at it. Educate and entertain. Didn't know that the <laughs> order of those two words made a difference. But let's, let's not get in. bogged down on well, it. As we've Core been, lithium. Yes, as we've been starting these episodes, company in a sentence, Ren, what have we got? Uh, lithium miner with mines in the Northern Territory and South Australia. There you go. Because as we say, if you can't explain your company in 30 seconds, you shouldn't be investing. Yes. You just did it in 10. Uh, and when we say Northern Territory and South Australia, the focus is on Northern Territory, really. Yeah. 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 They just started actually getting stuff out of the ground this year in Northern Territory. Uh, not even this year. <laughs> As we're recording, this month was the first shipment to port. That's why it's going gangbusters. 88 k's to Darwin Port. Let's take a, a look at the history. So they discovered lithium at, now forgive but pronunciation, but Finnis. Finnis, yeah. Finnis in the Northern Territory in 2016. As Ren said, it's located 88 kilometers away from the Darwin Port. And you know what, Bryce? A sealed road from Darwin Port. Wow. No, that actually matters. Sealed roads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why does that matter? Because well, you can, uh, your trucks can, it's easier for your trucks. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Well, don't be dismissive well, about it. Well, it's like, is that a competitive advantage? <laughs> it is, and it's something they call out in their equity raising deck. Wow. Well, 88 it's kilometers not- <laughs> sealed road to Darwin Port. It's not the electric, um, self generating electric train that. Twiggy. old mate Twiggy has, but we'll give it a sealed road. Uh, they have been working. <laughs> a right road. Bryce Lesky, too good for a sealed road over here. <laughs> so since 2016, they've really been working um, to get the mine built and yes. actually getting some lithium out of the ground. And as you said, Ren, March 2022, they commenced mining. And subsequently this month, they actually started shipping 
yes. lithium. And so that's its history, short history, core lithium today. It is developing one of Australia's most capital efficient and lowest cost lithium projects at Finnis. And they've already signed some big deals for offtake. Um, some big customers, including Tesla, a four-year deal with Ganfeng Lithium uh, to take 300,000 tons. Uh, a four-year deal with Yahoo to uh, also to take 300,000 fun- tons. God, I'm stumbling over my words today. <laughs> and then a four-year deal with Tesla to take up to 110,000 tons. The point being that lithium is so in demand mm. that this mine was, wasn't was even built yet and they were already getting these big multi-year offtake agreements. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that uh, mining is in demand because as at the time of recording, and this is uh, at the start of December, last night on ABC News, Alan Kohler loves to show a lithium, pr- the, the price of lithium. Okay. I reckon it's a weekly chart that he'll throw up. Okay. And lithium continues and is currently at an all-time high. Um, and we'll get to some of the price and, and drivers of that shortly, but I just thought it was timely given that we were recording this episode today. Yeah, I, I particularly want to talk about their C1 cost, like the cost to uh, get ore out of the ground and to get it to port. Um, but I guess when we're talking about the company, when we're analysing this company, it's got its mind today that it's uh, operating, but it really sees its future in lithium in the surrounding areas and so while it's mining where it is mining it's also exploring around that area it's got over 500 square kilometers of tenure over quote highly prospective ground for lithium in the northern territory at Finnis. and if you look at their uh investor charts sorry their in their maps in their decks um they you know they're exploring at some places they're feeling pretty positive about other places so they they basically think they can take what they've got and expand it and they think they're going to be mining lithium in the Northern Territory for a while. Yeah, at low cost. So they say. So Love to see it. We've got one of the world's lowest cost iron ore producers in Fortescue. Yeah. And one of the lowest, hopefully one of the lowest cost lithium producers as well, sitting yeah. in our backyard. We are right now the world's largest lithium producer, but we do not have the world's largest lithium deposit. No. Do you know where that is? Bolivia. I think it's Chile. I think Could it's, be Bolivia. I think Chile's third. Really? You've yeah. nailed it then. Bolivia, Argentina and Chile. And you know what the good thing that Australia does? So there are two ways to mine lithium. The first is good old Australian mining. Dig like it up. Dig a hole, yeah. take it out of um, you know the clay or the ore in the ground. And then the second way, which is really the way that South Americans do it because of where their deposits are, is to pump underground water to the surface mm. and then basically like evaporate like, it yeah evaporate it mm. yeah i scientists correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure our way is a lot more environmentally friendly than the south american way digging it up digging it rather than evaporating getting the sur- the underground water to the surface and evaporating yeah fascinating process that one but yeah the core lithium are digging they are digging. They are digging. Down to the earth's way. core. That's, it's in the name. <laughs> yes, true. Well, let's have a look at the cost to produce, Ren, because it's obviously a key part of an investment thesis when it comes to looking at miners and thinking about which, which ones to go with. And if they do say they're going to be one of the cheapest, they believe that they can produce 173,000 tonnes of high quality lithium concentrate. Now, here's some jargon at a C1 OPEX. Of or OPEX even. OPEX. <laughs> Dude, you're at Woolies. You would have used the word OPEX. OPEX. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So, Ren, the, the current price of lithium spodumene yeah. is sitting at just over 6000 US dollars per ton. Yeah. So, let's just put that into context. If we've got the numbers right here, uh, they're producing C1 OPEX of $364 a ton and then selling it for over $6,000 a ton. Yeah. And I don't know how this episode will be edited up, but for context for people, Bryce and I have spent about 10 minutes Googling and reading cause stuff because we feel like we missed a zero somewhere in those numbers. But no, that's the company says they can get 170, 173,000 tons per annum out of the ground at that $364 a ton mark. And then that's their cost. And then the price is around 6,000, 7,000. And Bryce, just a quick bit of jargon. We've said C1 a few times. We should explain what it means. It's basically like the direct cost of production. So your cost to get the mineral out of the ground, uh, 
to process it if you need to, and then freight to get it to your customer. Yeah, nice. Yeah, C1. Nice. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're doing some Googling into the prices of lithium spodumene, which is what they're digging out of the ground, it's all, it's the, the, the price rise this year has been astronomical. Yeah, it has been. Yeah, there are articles written in July saying uh, that the, the prices for lithium spodumene are projected to average about two, $2,000 a tonne and ease to about 2000 But they're, they're, they're kicking at the moment. Well, I mean, Core Lithium have their own... Uh, their own projections but again confusingly the price is different they had so the spot sorry the spot price in september 22 is just under seven thousand, which is right core forecast in f23 that price will come down to just over three thousand dollars a ton and they think there will be a pretty smooth trend line down by f27 they think it will be just a bit over a thousand dollars a ton and they think the long-term price will be around a thousand dollars a ton so keep in mind that's still like a 65 percent gross margin if you're selling something for a thousand dollars and you're spending 350 dollars to produce it yeah it's it's an interesting dynamic because uh the demand for lithium is not going to be no, decreasing, but, but there's going to obviously be more supply online. Well, two, two things. And this is probably the, the key thing when I think about lithium generally. There's obviously always going to be demand. But the, the first thing is the supply question. Mm. When will South America get their act together mm. and produce? And they are. Um, but then the second thing is right now, lithium ion batteries are our best form of storing energy. And so they go in everything. But you have to think that if lithium becomes a really... If, if lithium becomes the bottleneck in the system, if it becomes the constraint, either because of cost or because of availability of the resource, there will be a huge economic incentive to find another way to efficiently store energy or store electricity without lithium, like to other types of batteries, is what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, but isn't isn't it... I mean, it's not like that there's been a... a an abundant supply of lithium to date. So, but but, but supply and demand have been in concert. Look at your Alan Kohler graph. You not, know? Not, they're not now though. No, they're not now. That's that's yeah. why there's an economic incentive now, but there <laughs> yeah. wasn't four years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, when Apple yeah. was putting a lithium ion battery in our phones and in our computers, yeah. they could get the lithium they needed. I was like five to, years too early on the lithium there, trade. There was literally... Uh, there's a mine, I think in WA, that is now one of the biggest lithium mines in the world. But like when it w- was started operating as a mine, it was a gold mine. And they I think it's Sayona. Oh, really? I think so. They have a WA operation. Yeah, and they yeah, just didn't they, they didn't care about the lithium, but now they care about the lithium. Mm. That's capitalism, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look at the the numbers for Core Lithium. Market cap two and a half billion. It's up a hundred and twelve percent year to date. Hot stuff. And it is up one thousand one hundred and fourteen percent. Over the past five years. It's 10 bagged before it's brought in a dollar of revenue. <laughs> it's always the case with these. Always? Mostly. We should start a mining company. Well, <laughs> and then you look at what, yeah, then then see what happens from here. But um, it, yeah, you, great if you're a core lithium investor five years ago. Revenue, Ren. <laughs> and even better if you're a Microsoft investor 30 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> revenue, Ren. Pre-revenue. Pre-revenue. Yeah, they've only, they will just start generating. Yeah. Um, they did make a loss this last year of seven and a half million dollars. Would have been amazing if they made a profit. I know, given that they're trying to scale up their operations. No, given that they have no revenue. Well, that's of course. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. They spent seven and a half million dollars last financial year building out their mine, as expected. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get Henry's thoughts on Core Lithium, but before we turn to that, it is worth just going through some of the numbers uh, that we haven't touched on in terms of uh, industry and macro. Um, so, Ren, you, you spoke about the two ways that you can dig up lithium from the ground. Australia has the literal dig it up. South America has the force it up with water from the from the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Interesting. So I'm just I'm just reading ahead. Uh, We've got the world's largest lithium supplies. You've got Bolivia, number one. Yeah. Uh, Reserves. Oh, supp- did you say yes? Yeah, supplies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bolivia, number one. Argentina, number two. Chile, number three. Mm. But if you just Google world's largest lithium reserves, the first response is Chile, number one. 
Ah, interesting. That's but okay. then in your defense, if you go to the second res- the second one, it's Bolivia, Argentina, Chile. That's probably the one you used. Third, Chile, largest. How many? How many tons? Though? I'm pretty sure I got this from the, like the lithium body. Really? Yeah, because I had this same thing when I was having doing some research, and but it came through that another one. So another one says Chile. Another one. Look. I think we can agree that it is South America. <laughs> yeah, they, it's called the Lithium Triangle. Yeah. Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile together account for more than 63% of the world's lithium reserves. Yeah. So let's put that into context. Australia ranks fifth, depending on which list you look at, with about 6 million uh, metric t- six million tons, metric tons yeah. of um, lithium reserves. And, and I think when we're talking about individual companies, who cares if... There, how much Australia has. Like, if you want to invest in Core Lithium or Sayona or Mineral Reserves, you only really care about how much they have and what it costs to produce. Yeah. And then you just value, like, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, that y- you could have an American. Well, there was another one. Oh, no. Sayona that's big in North America, right? Yeah. Canada. No- North America doesn't top any of these lists no. for Lithium Reserves. But if they have enough and they can produce it cheaply and they can get it out. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, top three lithium producing countries. Australia sits at the top 55,000 metric tons a year, then Chile, then China. Um, getting in there, China produces 14,000 metric tons a year. So add those three together, 55, 26, 14, that's 95,000 metric tons. In 2021, the world produced 100,000 metric tons. Yep. So those three are the big three for now. Yeah. Obviously, Argentina and Bolivia will come to the party at some point. But right now, they're the three. So, in 2021, the world produced 100,000 metric tons of lithium. What do you think the world's demand for lithium is this year? Four times that. It's almost like you read the script. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually five times. Uh, 500,000 metric tons. Yeah. This year, that's what expected demand is going to come out at. By 2030... Uh, experts think it will be 2 million metric tons. Mm. And we produced 100,000 metric tons in 2021. So we need a lot of supply to come into the market ASAP. Otherwise, the price of lithium feels like it's absolutely going to go to the moon. Or, as you said, it becomes so expensive that it becomes a little prohibitive. It's a constraint and then we innovate around that constraint. Um, it, It is important to note though that when we're talking about individual companies, some of like, you know, where the world's reserves are don't matter so much. Like if you're just looking at core or you're looking at Sayona or any of these lithium mineral resources, any of them, it's how much do they have? What can they get it out of the ground for? And then what's the lithium price? Yeah. Some of these bigger conversations around like where the rest of the world gets their lithium from, not as relevant. Yeah. Obviously supply and demand affects price though. Um, that, so lithium has now become a real security yeah. concern. Yeah. Um, and I think that security story is no clearer than in Canada. So in November, Canada forced China and Chinese companies to sell their holdings in three uh, Canadian mining companies. I think at least one of... No, I think all three of them actually were lithium miners. Canada didn't want China touching their lithium miners. Like that's that's the level that we've got to now. Yeah. Well, it's a major input into some pretty important technologies. And so you can understand why, well, particularly that given that uh, China is one of the biggest producers as well, it's becoming a bit of a political... Yeah, and one of the biggest t- users. ...sore point and users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I think that that's the main thing for Canada. They don't want their mining companies to have to sell to China. Mm. You're also seeing some pretty interesting... Um, joint ventures and collaborations between technology companies and lithium suppliers as well. As we've seen, Tesla, um, I'm not sure if it's fallen through with Core Lithium or not, but they did a deal with Core Lithium and um, likely to see more. So pretty yeah. important resource. That is a good call out because I think earlier in the pace, I said they had a deal with Tesla. I think it did fall through. There you go. D- 
Do your own research. D-Y- D-Y-O-R. Anyway, Ren, I think uh, we'll leave it there and we will pick it up straight after this ad break with Henry Jennings, who, as I said, uh, chose Core Lithium as, as his high conviction stock in October 2022. So fascinated to get his thoughts on uh, what the bull case may be, what the bear case is, and what some of the key metrics are when you are looking at resource companies such as Core Lithium. So uh, excited for that. We'll pick it up after the break. Yeah. So, Ren, we're super excited to uh, welcome Henry Jennings, analyst and investment manager from Marcus Today, to talk us through the bull case, the bear case, the key metrics, and what Core Lithium looks like for the next 10 years. So, so Henry, welcome. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Good to be here again. Yes, absolutely. Uh, can't wait to get stuck in. So, the first question we've been asking all our experts, Henry, is around the metrics. Uh, Ren and I have had a bit of a chit chat about, um, you know, the numbers behind Core Lithium, but when it comes to analysing these sorts of mining stocks, what what are the key metrics that you're looking at? Well, I guess uh, one of the key metrics is how big the deposit is, in terms of and in terms of mine life as well going forward. But the other one, which is probably the most important at the moment, is the fact that it is Johnny on the spot. It is the guys that are next into production. In fact, they've already started shipping DSO. This uh, well, they did their first shipment recently, which raised about twenty million bucks. So that is the important thing. They are the guys, the, the next producers. Now, the finished project near Darwin is not the biggest project. It's not as big as Pilbara. It's not as big as some of the South American ones, obviously. But it is the next one there, um, and of course that means that they can take advantage of the high prices that we're seeing in lithium now. You know, we have seen the lithium price plateau a little bit and come off a smidge. Uh, and we've seen some sort of um, decrease in Chinese EV sales. But let's face it, if you're locked at home, you're not exactly going to buy a Tesla, are you? <laughs> so that, that's understandable. But um, so for Core Lithium, it is really about the mine life, which we know is relatively short. Um, but it also is about the exploration and the drilling, which is going to extend that. And there's plenty of opportunities around as well. There's a company next door called Lithium Plus. LPM is the stock code, which has a lot of ground around them, and they've had some quite interesting results as well. So it really is, I guess, for me, about taking advantage of those high spot prices. And unfortunately, it doesn't happen instantly. Mm. You know, they've been building this project for a long time, and there is some issues that we will talk about in a minute, potentially, with that in terms of ramping it up to get to that full production because you don't just turn a mine on and instantly it's at full production mm. that's not how it works so it takes a little while to work that out so it is about taking advantage of the current prices and at the moment the market is valuing core lithium at sort of two thousand dollars a ton for for their product as opposed to where it is six seven eight thousand mm. dollars a ton so it's it's very undervalued if you were to put in spot prices which is Sometimes a dumb way of doing it, but if you did that, you know, you come up with a valuation of around five bucks. Just on that, with entry into companies like this, you've mentioned that it, you know the it's um, it's great because it's live now and and lithium prices are high. But you know, uh, as part of the summer series, we did look at another or other lithium companies, Sayona Mining, which has their uh, yep, Quebec Canada. and Canada and yep. they're about to come online and then there's probably a handful of others that say that over the next two years is the entry points to these companies what like just before they come online or how do you think about getting in on these um, well I, I guess it depends on how much risk you want to take I mean th- they go through a cycle they, they obviously go through the drilling cycle and they have to then get the money to do the project and they have to build the project and they have to ramp up and then they just become a producer mm. um, so depending on where you are on that risk curve is where you want to invest you know buying something I bought call lithium five six years ago when it was a glint in its mother's eye nice. and it was five cents you know, they even did a capital raise, a share purchase plan at 31 cents, and I topped up then. Um, and that wasn't that long ago. And as, as the timeline of mining projects, they get closer and closer to production, you do get that value uplift because it's de risked the project. Mm. Now, the question, I guess, is once you start production and you get up to sort of the, 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 the boilerplate capacity of production, where do you go from there? Because then it's a kind of a diminishing mm, asset, if you mm. like. They're getting cash in the door, mm. but it's a diminishing asset. So they've got to keep drilling to do that. So it tends to be maybe that share prices plateau a little bit after the production kicks in. Mm. And then there's always issues of maintenance, production problems, weather, 
all this sort of thing that then becomes far more kind of prosaic in terms of the actual thing rather than that that big hope and that big optimism that we have you know projects starting they're going to take advantage of the big prices um, so depends on where you want to be in that risk and obviously if you're just investing at the five cent mark there's plenty of risk because they've got to get dfs's and bankable feasibility studies off take agreements all that sort of stuff so that is risk mm. and mm. You, you have to stay i mean this was five six years ago i bought this thing mm. um at five or six cents so it, it can be a long journey it can be a very lucrative one but for years it did nothing yeah mm. you know yeah. and it got i got bored senseless i'm surprised to be honest i didn't lose interest <laughs> <laughs> and just it. chopped them you um, obviously believed in like it's not like it was the only lithium op option. No, it, it wasn't. Um, I guess part of the thing that made me keep it was that I had uh, a meeting all those years ago when I first bought it with Stephen Biggins, who was the CEO and the driving force behind the project. So meeting the management and mm. seeing that these guys could do what they say they were going to do kind of gives you confidence and optimism to hold it. And, you know, it does get stuck away in the bottom drawer and you think, okay, well... One day it'll happen, um, and sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it does, and mm. in this case, it does. Now, Henry, talking about the metrics, one that uh, Bryce and I got a little, not stuck on, but uh, surprised by was their C1 cost, the, the, their direct cost. Uh, the company forecast that they can get 173,000 tonnes of lithium out of the ground uh, per year, at three hundred and sixty-four dollars a ton, and the spot price is what over seven seven. It's around what six or seven thousand dollars at the moment. Uh, is this company just going to print money for a few years? Well, if you look at the example, for instance, of of Pilbara, mm. you know that is a money printing machine now. What do you know? Like, uh, what does their uh, opex cost come in at? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's pretty low yeah. compared to the prices. And you've got to remember all these guys will be doing bankable feasibility studies and all their studies will be based on really, really conservative numbers. This big leap in lithium is just a massive sort of cream on top for mm -hmm. these guys. And you can see even with the coal companies, you know, the White Havens and the New Hopes, th th this is these extraordinary times that we're living through in some of these energy materials. So as a result... You know, it's the the costs look quite cheap, but they probably weren't when they did, you know, all the studies and everything. Mm. Um, and they, if they can achieve that, they're going to make an absolute mozza, mm. and they're going to be churning out cash once they get to capacity, um, churning out cash and taking advantage of those high prices. But um, you know, and they will become a mini Pilbara. Yeah. And they won't really know what to do. Um, Pilbara now got to the stage where they don't really know what to do with all the money. <laughs> Must well, be nice. Well, it, I mean, it's the same with you know Whitehaven and all these guys. What do you do with all this cash? The market hates you buying, you know, making acquisitions. And we've seen this time and time again with resource companies. When they make lots of cash, they don't know what to do with it. So they go and spend it on something dumb. BHP and Rio Classic used to buy things at the top of the market because they had so much money. Um, and the danger is that they do that. Now there's a sort of precedent that dividends start to flow. Pilbara, we've seen them now talk about their dividend policy for 2023, and they could have a 34 cent dividend, uh, in which case that's a pretty flash yield. I, I know investors are impatient and they hate to see money sitting in a bank account it's either like do something good with it buy back shares or give it to me and i'll do something with it but surely from just forget the investors surely from a business point of view it makes sense to put it in the bank wait for the market to turn and then buy things at the bottom of the cycle it, it makes perfect sense but no one does it well some people do <laughs> but but it's uh, you know it does make perfect sense you know but investors and share active you know shareholder activists are pushing and they push BHP to split the demerge the you know the UK listing and all that and get rid of the oil and gas assets which they've done so um, there's a lot of pressure on these companies mm -hmm. to give rewards to shareholders yeah. you know it may be a small token one and also remember that there are an awful lot of funds out there that can't invest in a company that doesn't pay a dividend mm -hmm. which is why News Corp pay whatever it is, a cent or something, because it's a token and everyone goes, well, why did you bother? 
And you think, well, there's a reason why they, yeah, they yeah. bother is because that way a fund who's only allowed to invest in companies that pay a dividend can invest in News Corp. Mm. And at some stage, Core Lithium will be throwing out enough cash to start paying that back to shareholders, having taken care of the fact that they've got to drill and explore and enlarge and keep you know, developing the resource that they've got. Because it's kind of, it's, it's a weird, um, it's not a big, you know, it's not a big hole in the ground that they're going to produce. It's, there's lot, it's sort of spots. Mm. Um, it's concentrated in spots, the same as Lithium Plus next door. They've got these sort of five or six different spots and together they're a good resource, but individually they're probably not. So it's only when they're close combined and close to infrastructure as well. Mm. Of course, it's only 90 k's from Darwin, which yeah. makes it that attractive. Mm. Along a sealed road, as we learnt. <laughs> God, I love a sealed road. <laughs> It'd be nice to get one in Sydney, wouldn't it? <laughs> Nice to get a sealed road in Sydney without well, potholes. When they uh, discover lithium under Darlinghurst, that's when we'll get it. <laughs> well, it, it's there. I mean, lithium is not the you know it's not that uncommon. Mm. I think it's one of the most common materials in the Earth's crust. It's just finding it a in the right place and b in sufficient concentrations that it's it's economic. Perfect, you know, yeah. there's lithium in seawater, yeah. um, but uh, not very. Tiny weenie, yeah, yeah. tiny weeny amounts. <laughs> so Henry, you pitched Core Lithium as your high conviction stock at Equity Mates inaugural FinFest 2022, yep. and it absolutely went on a tear after that. It did. Equity the, Mates the, bump. Yeah, the FinFest bump, as they call <laughs> the it. FinFest bump. Is that, is that what they call yeah, it? That's what, hey, not us. That's what people are calling it. <laughs> not us. Not, not us. Not me. But it um it it went on a tear, and then um i'm gonna say about two weeks ago, from time of recording, it's uh, early December. You you put out a sell. I, I, I wasn't an outright sell. It was more a take profit. Take it, profit. Mainly because okay, it had run. You know, I yeah. think it was $1.15, $1.16 that, that weekend of FinFest on yeah. the Friday. And it got to $1.90 yeah. within a month. Hell yeah. You know, and, <laughs> which, was so, gra- which was great. But, you know. It's, you say it like it's a bad thing. Well, <laughs> I, I, it is a bad thing in some respects. It is a bad thing in some respects because you don't want the fireworks that flash into the sky big burst of flames and then you know it looks really pretty and then crashes to earth and takes out someone's house yes you know you you want the nice yeah. gradual grindy burny up she goes yeah. and it's you no know, it's the quiet achiever and you know you turn around in six months time and it's a dollar eighty yeah. yeah and you think oh that's nice yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than whoops up she goes then doing back mm. down to earth again and that that's you know that that does put people off mm. especially if if they're if they came to the story somewhat later than FinFest and they're sort of long at 160, 170, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it crashes to, to 135, yeah, yeah, they're going, story. well, this is, yeah, no, this, yeah. is a, this is a suboptimal experience. Yeah. Whereas you know, those that got in early and were shrewd enough to say, you know what, this, nothing goes up in a straight line forever. So, the, so, okay, so it was a trim or take profits, but um, what, what's, is there still a bull case from here for you? Is it what... what What's what's the bull case? There, there, well, there's definitely a bull case. Obviously, they're coming into production. Yeah. Um, the, the reason that I said trim, apart from the share price, was that all along the story had been they were going to get production in 2022. Yeah. Last quarter of 2022. And they have had this DSO production, which they didn't bargain for. This was direct shipping or which they didn't think was going to happen. And that has happened. But the production, the big production... Well, the start of the big production is not happening till the first quarter of 2023. So that is a bit of a negative. That's why it was kind of a trim, take some profits, because the market was all getting excited. And I think that also there was an excitement that, um, apart from FinFest and you guys, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> but, there, but there was also an excitement that there was a lot of speculation at the time about takeovers. You know, and it makes it makes sense at some stage. The the majors are going to look at this space, and if they haven't gone dull, you know, missed it, lithium, yeah. um, then they miss Pilbara. You know, Pilbara is now a fifteen billion dollar company, whereas um, Core Lithium is a fraction of that size, mm. um, and it's not going to be another Pilbara. Mm. But equally, it could be the base of a a mini Pilbara and it could be something that someone could buy. So I think there was a bit of media speculation in there and I think there still is. And that, that's why, you know, I think some of these, um, if you're Rio, say, you don't buy the company when it's five cents because it's got all that risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But once it gets into production, someone else has done all the hard work. It's not like they're short of cash. 
Hmm. Someone else has done all the hard work, and then they can start to reap. They know how to they know how to sweat it, yeah. producing assets. Yeah, yeah. They're not always great explorers. They'll let someone else do that, and then they'll take it on once it starts to produce. Um, so that, I think there is, that's one of the bull cases. Obviously, high lithium prices is a, is a big bull case uh, for it, and you know it's it's in the right place at the right time. Mm. Um, there are some negatives, if you want me to talk about the yeah, negatives. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, let, let's get to that bear case. Um, what are the negatives? Well, the negatives, obviously, is, is the, the lithium price, yeah. which has gone up in a straight line, pretty much the same as core lithium's price. The other negative we have seen is there has been quite a high turnover of senior management. Now, that can be okay, because the guys that drill and explore and then create the project, not necessarily that interested in running it from there. They get turned on by going and finding a new deposit, developing it, do all the studies. That that's their thing. It's like, you know, it's like any business. There's certain people who like certain parts of it and other people are happy to take over the more boring, hey, let's just dig the dirt out, send it to China, <laughs> that side of things, which is a bit less exciting. So um, but there has been quite a high turnover in senior management. Also it has been quite wet uh, up there. So we potentially could see some um, delays to that production coming through, which would then disappoint the market as well. So there, there are some negatives. Uh, the, the ramp up is always, you know, things go wrong, things break. It's, you know, it's um, when you're starting a new project, starting a new mine producing, then you've got to, you've got to produce. Mm. And if something goes wrong or a bit breaks or whatever, or it's the wrong part that gets sent from wherever, then um, you know, things can take time. So there is a risk of delays to that production. And senior management, it has been a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a, a roundabout at the moment. Yeah. What, one other, so you mentioned the lithium price there. And, um, you know, Bryce and I were speaking earlier in this episode about Argentina, Bolivia and Chile, the lithium triangle or whatever they call it. You know, Australia produces, what, more than double Chile at the moment. But the, the biggest deposit in the world is over there. Is there, like, what what's going on over there? Is there a chance that a massive supply from South America comes into the market or, like? Um, n- no. Okay. Yeah. I think is the answer. Um, Great. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's a number of things. Apart from the fact, you know, Chile's just got a new um, president new government and they you know we're seeing environmental concerns especially in chile from farmers uh, the brine business is pretty water intensive um it takes a lot of water it can um you know you end up with a big pile of, of waste um and farmers aren't particularly chuffed i mean everyone wants to electrify the planet everyone wants electric vehicles yeah. and to make it a green place but the, the the ironic thing and the tough thing is that in order to do so We've got to dig this stuff up or evaporate it or do something or get, you know, materials, mining. Um, we need to do that. And, but nobody wants it in their backyard. Yeah. Um, and Chile is probably easier in Argentina because where it is is not farmland. It's, it's high up. Um, there's not so much rainfall. Um, I was talking to a guy from Argosy, which is, which is in sort of uh, Brazil as well. They, you know, they, they don't have the same problems that they have elsewhere. And the whole brine game takes a long time yeah you know you're looking at 18 months um, unless you speed it up with some technology and the technology is not really sufficiently developed on sufficient scale yeah, to, okay. to just flick the switch and go yep you know there's your lithium yeah so um, that that's the problem that's why prices are going to stay relatively high because the supply just really isn't there yeah and it's not just projects are hard to come by big ones uh, geology is, um, you know, people don't want it in their backyard. Finding the projects is hard. And also finding the people. Mm. You know, it's, it's, I, I saw a guy present at a conference and he was saying that basically geologists are getting old and dying. And there's no young kids that want to go into the mining industry. Really? Yeah, wow. Well, because they all want to save the planet. Yeah. It's, yeah. The mining yeah. industry is dirty. Certain irony there. Yeah, they all want to save the planet, but they don't want to actually go and work in sweaty, hot, dusty places in the middle of nowhere where they're surrounded by, you know, 
nasty creatures and no, you know, all this sort of stuff and degradation, uh, deprivation rather. Um, you're not going to be able to go out with your mates. You know, you're going to mm. be on an alcohol-free place in the middle of nowhere. FIFO, they don't want to do it. Mm. It's um, it's a dying. We the guy actually did a, a straw poll of the hundred people in the room, and they were all old people like me. And they said, who um, who knows a young person that's starting uh, university that's going into something to do with mining, geology, or, or engineering, or something like that. One person out of a hundred put their hand up. Wow, really? there you go. Well, if any young people are listening, uh, great. there's probably going to be plenty of jobs in there's plenty uh, of jobs. lithium mining. There's, like, well, there's plenty of jobs in mining, mining full mining. stop. Yeah. Um, but it's not very conducive for young people's social lives. Yeah. Mm. Well, Henry, to, to close, speaking of the future, um, Core Lithium, if it is successful in its ambitions, what do you think it looks like in 10 years? And, uh, and maybe we actually extend it to... 12 years given <laughs> well given the mine life, that the mine life? Yeah. <laughs> um i i you know this this is a great start for them they've got a a, a, a lot of cash that's going to come their way the question will be what they do with that cash uh, over the next 10 12 years um obviously there's going to be some drilling and exploration but there will be some acquisitions because it's kind of you know you, you're building a foundation of a mining house or mining company on one project mm. and then you kind of you know a bit pac-man like you kind of extend from, from there all around whether it's neighbors whether it's in a different country and you diversify as well so you know it'll probably be a very different looking business in a decade it will obviously still be lithium if lithium is the thing and i suspect it will be yeah um, but it won't just be the finnish project near darwin it will be something in darwin which is the bedrock mm. and the cash cow that's producing the money that then allows them to go and pay dividends and then to go and buy other projects elsewhere in the world or it, in australia is there like is there a chance that they decide we do exploring around finnis uh there's nothing else that's sort of good enough to mine rather than trying to build a long-term sustainable business we're going to sweat this asset be as cost efficient as possible give you guys as much money as possible but in 12 years we will no longer be a going concern <laughs> like does that happen or not nah. really yeah okay nah. it's it's you know these are these are lifestyle businesses as well for the directors yeah, yeah. yeah. they don't want to they don't want to you know they don't want the zero yeah, yeah. hedge yeah. situation where it's just a, a diminishing asset the, the whole idea is to try and get it up there yeah and keep it up there yeah. Um, through acquisitions, through new exploration, replace what you've dug up. Um, that that's their their yeah. method. Yeah, that's what they do. It's very it's very few mining houses or mining companies that just basically exhaust the asset. See ya. Yeah, and, and then say <laughs> you'd love see to, you later. Yeah. You'd love to see that though. It's like in twelve years, our share price will be zero. Do you discounted cash flows? We're going to spit off cash, but you know. Well, this is I, a one project deal. I, I can't, I can't think of too many that that do that. Bryce and I are going to get into geology, and we'll do it for you. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's it would be um, an interesting business model. I mean, equally, it's an interesting business model to plow the money back into the company to try and keep finding more to replace the stuff you've done, because the risk is that you can't, and you do end up wasting the money, yeah, yeah. and then becoming the company that goes. To zero. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, every company goes to zero. We all go to zero. <laughs> Everything goes to zero. It's well, the Henry, nature of the beast. <laughs> well, Henry, we will leave it there. Um, a massive thank you. A thank you to Sharesies for supporting Summer Series. Uh, for more information, head to sharesies.com.au to learn more. You can download the Sharesies app. But Henry, uh, you said before that you reckon you can only speak to it for five minutes. You, I feel like you could speak to this for another hour or so. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. It's an absolute pleasure. Well called at our FinFest. If you uh, didn't get a chance to see Henry or our Marcus at FinFest, uh, their uh, presentations are available on our YouTube channel as well. You can listen to Henry's uh, thesis on Core Lithium as well as uh, the presentation he did with Marcus. You know what? I was such a dork. Why? When I did that presentation, why is that? And I, when I look back, I realised what a dork I'd been. No. Because in my in my nerves to be up in front of all those people with those headphones on in that neon tent, yeah. Uh, the, my first question was, who likes Star Wars? <laughs> so, so and, well, no, no, but I was talking about dilithium crystals, and that's Star Trek. 
Oh, uh, which is why everyone was looking at me blankly. I wouldn't have got the reference. I, would oh, I did. Yeah, I, 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 no. and I thought, you dork. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, nonetheless, it was well received. <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, but Ren, we'll leave it there and uh, pick it up next week. Sounds good. I will say this about investing. Everything you do learn is cumulative. What I learned at 20 is useful. 